My name is Dave Loy. I'm with United Way. And United Way and Horizons are coming together again to do summer meals this year. Uh, how many of you were with us last year and did summer meals? Good. Quite a few of you. That's good. Um, we are videotaping, just so you know, so that they can go out onto the web. And uh, those that can't make it today, they can watch it there. So we're trying to make sure that everybody gets a chance to get the details. This year is a little different. Uh, we have some different things that we're going to be doing, which really helps in your volunteer work. For those of you that weren't here last year, I really appreciate you stepping forward. The need is great. Over 13,000 kids during the school year are on free or reduced lunch. And in the summer last year, including all of the sites, not only the Horizon sites, but those other sites that were there, we fed about a thousand kids a day. So you can see that there's quite a gap between a thousand and thirteen thousand. And so we're trying to find ways to increase the numbers that are coming to get the free meals. So one of the things that we're done is there was an analysis done from last year's data and we discovered that the two sites that we had that were in mobile home communities were very well attended. Kind of makes sense. They don't have to walk very far. They're familiar with it. There's a safety factor involved there. They don't have to cross any big streets. So because of that, we've increased the number of sites that are in mobile home communities. And we're going to see how it goes. So many of you are probably going to be at a mobile home site. The wonderful thing about this year, too, is that when, as I've talked with the mobile home sites and asked if they would be willing, they jumped on it. And they are very excited about being able to offer it. We've also increased where we are doing things in parks. We've added Thomas Park uh, in Marion to our parks. And so, we're trying to find those ways that we can increase the numbers that are there. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Jenny, the Barnett, uh, and she's going to give you all the details on what goes on this year. If you have any questions, certainly ask them at any point. We want to make sure that you're comfortable with them. Any questions at this point? All right, we'll turn it over to Jenny. Yeah. Welcome everybody. First off, thank you so much. Without you guys, the summer meals would not happen. So we're so very thankful that we have volunteers that come back every year to make sure that we can get these kiddos fed. Um, today we're going to go off of the agenda that you have. Um, I put it in there a little different than what we're gonna see. I tried to save sheet paper so that you guys, I didn't lose another tree. So. You'll see the agenda there, that's what I'm going to follow on there. Um, first, what we're gonna talk about are the civil rights requirement. This is a requirement, a lot of the stuff that I talk about, when I say it's a requirement, those are state requirements, and the state has requirements that come from the Department of Agriculture that pays for the meals that we give. So when I say program requirements, or I say that it's something that, a policy that we have, we have to follow these policies to a T because it's very strict on where the money comes from and what it's used for. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, civil rights requirement, we are an equal opportunity provider. Um, and if you look in your packets, you'll see um, it's stapled, you see a poster there. I don't have a color printer, so this is what it will look like when you go to the sites. <laughs> This is required to be posted at all of the sites, and you all won't have to worry about this this year because the drivers, the way that we're doing it this year, if you did it last year, you know that you were there for a certain amount of time, and then the drivers would come back with extra meals. We're not doing that this year. The driver will stay there for the whole half hour. 
during that half hour, this poster needs to be put out. So if you're at a site and the driver forgets, we all forget things for human. If you see that the, the, the sign isn't put up, please be helpful and say, hey, you got that poster that needs to be put up for justice and all, for justice for all, and then just make sure that this is seen so that everybody can see it. Um, I'm not going to read through this whole packet for you here. It's just that you know we are an equal opportunity um, provider and that we serve meals to anyone regardless. It doesn't matter if they're their sex, their um, religion, based on any of that kind of stuff. So make sure you look through that. Um, and if you're interested, there's also a policy there for the food and nutrition services policy for you to be able to reference for that. Uh, the next thing on our agenda are the volunteer duties and responsibilities. On the back of your agenda, you will see this. It's on the top. It'll say summer meals procedures for the volunteers. This is what you're going to go off of for your duties while you are volunteering over there. So at each of the sites, um, they're designated a serving time, and that's a half an hour. So we need to make sure that when you're at that site, the meal is being served. If it starts at noon and it ends at 12:30, it needs to be during that time. When the state um, comes to do their site reviews, they'll do. Um, unannounced visits they'll come out they're going to make sure that it starts during those times i was at one of the sites at the lab library and it actually started one minute after and she documented it so they're very very strict on when they have a requirement they're going to write it down so just make sure that you're trying to be cognizant of those times that we're serving those meals um, so please plan to arrive on time and plan to stay for up a half an hour. The driver's going to be there for a half an hour and then after the driver leaves there might be some kids that are going to be still eating. So as a volunteer you're going to stay there, keep them company, talk to them, and you're going to make sure that the site is all cleaned up before you leave. So it should take about an hour for your time when you're volunteering. Uh, once the driver arrives at the site with the meals, please sign in and use hand sanitizer sir. Um, so you can assist him with handing out of the meals. The drivers will have hand sanitizers in their vehicles. You are going to use the hand sanitizer and then we also want the kiddos to use that too so if they're getting rid of some other germs there. If you're at a site that has soap and water and access to running water, do that. That's better than the hand sanitizer actually because if you think about it, it's pretty elementary. If you're washing your hands, the germs go down the drain. So if you have access to the soap and water, running water, use that instead of the hand sanitizer. Um, an example of that, the Oak Hill um, site, they have bathrooms right there. The kids all line up, get their hands washed, and then they go sit down and get ready to eat. So, um, Children are encouraged to form a... Yes? I have a question. Once the driver arrives at the site, I sign in or he signs in? I'm going to get to what you're going to do as a volunteer. I have some sign-in sheets that you'll see that I'll give you an okay. example of those. Okay, children are encouraged to form a line. They're gonna use the hand sanitizer, or like I said, they're gonna wash their hands. They're gonna pick up their food. Uh, the volunteers will assist by handing the meal component to the children, and we need to make sure that we're giving them all of the components um, for the meal. Um, please assist to preserve the food as long as possible. Because we're going on the routes now, each of the routes has a two hour window of where that food is gonna be safe to be able to keep heated. They have heating pads in each of those vehicles, and what we're trying to do, the reason we did it this way last this year is because we're trying to save on waste. Last year we had meals dropped off and there might be extra. We don't know how many kids are coming every day. So some days there could be three or four meals left over. Well, if you think about that, if a meal is $5 and you've got five and then you add all of that up and that food is wasted, we don't want that. So what we're doing with these warmers is they can keep them on there for two hours to be able to make sure that we're not having as much waste. So when they leave, have their half hour, they'll go to the next site and then they'll have their food with them for that whole thing. So we're really hoping to be able to save on meal wastage and then to be able to provide more meals to kids. So, so it's really important. Yep, yeah, okay. I just wanted to introduce Brian Sequenza really quickly. How do you do? He's one of the site monitors um, and he is at Thomas Park, Bali High, Marion, and Five Seasons Mobile Home. So if you have any questions about your site or you have any questions or concerns about anything that's going on, and he's your site monitor, he's your man. So. All right, 1303. Extension 1303. So I have that list on the board. Thank you, Brian. 
Um, the driver this year is going to stand at the end of the line and they are going to have a meal count sheet. Um, they are going to be responsible for making sure that all of those meals are counted for. Um, be there as a helper because sometimes it can get a little chaotic with kids running around and doing all of that stuff. We know how kids are. <laughs> so just make sure that we're making sure that every meal is counted for when they get their meals. Um, the driver is going to remain at the site during the entire half hour. Um, once they're done, they're going to pack up and they're going to move to the next site. So once the driver is gone, please stay there with the children until they're done eating. Help with the wrappers, the trays, um, the cartons of milk. Make sure that is all put into the garbages. Um, and then just stay until the last child is done. Um, and then while you're at the site, there's contact information that you'll need to write down. Like I said, if you have any questions, please call us and we're going to be able to answer those questions for you. Um, there is a daily sign-in. I didn't put that in your paperwork um, because this year the site drivers will do that, but I'm going to show you an example of that. A question back here? Uh, Jenny, for the garbage? Yes. Out in the parks? Out in the parks, the Department of Rec is going to take care of that. Just make sure that all of the garbage is in the trash receptacles and then they'll take care of the waste disposal. They'll go around every day and they'll make sure that those are empty. Good question. So the very first time that you um, go to a site, the driver's going to have the binder. We're not going to have them at the sites every time. All of the paperwork's going to be in one spot with those drivers, and that takes away some of the ability to lose that stuff that we need to keep for the state. Um, in the binder, there's going to be a sheet that looks like this, and it is the Summer Meals Volunteer Sign-In. And with this sign-in, you will sign this one time. The very first time that you go, we need to have the date, your name, your phone number, your email, and how you um, took the training. For all of you, you can just put in person. If you're there with another volunteer that wasn't able to attend today, you can help them and say it's either in person, they can watch by video, and they can put that on here. So that's how we'll get that training requirement. And then we keep these all at the end of the summer because if the state comes back and audits us, they're going to want to see all of these. So this is a sheet that you will sign one time. The only time you'll sign both of these is the very first time you're there. There's also a summer meals volunteer hours log sheet. Every time you go volunteer, please make sure that you sign in on this. This is going to be your name and it's also going to put how many hours you were there. This is really important for us at Horizons and at United Way to be able to track how many volunteers it takes. It helps us for next year when we say, this is how many volunteers we needed and this is how many meals we served, just to be able to show people that the need is really out there and without the volunteers we couldn't do this. So please make sure that you sign in for us on that. So every time you go. And I also talked about the daily meal count. Yes? Jenny. What we're going to do is we'll have them sign in for that and then we're going to revert, tell them about the video so that they can watch the video and be able to get trained in that way. So, is that okay? Thank you. But everybody needs to see the video. Everybody needs to see the video in order to be trained. Can they see the video prior to the dates? Yes, they can. We, we hope to have it set up this week. Hopefully by sometime tomorrow. We're going to be sending email off those sorts of questions. Sounds yep, good. Yep. So we'll have a YouTube link for them to be able to preview the training and be able to do that. So the other sheet that I talked about was the daily meal count form, and this is what the drivers are going to be how they're going to be tracking the children eating. Um, they're going to need to do this at the point where the children receive their meals. So when the Children go through the line to get handed their meal, which is gonna come in a little container, kind of looks like a TV tray, like a TV dinner, frozen dinner. Then they're gonna go down the line and they'll either have a fruit or a vegetable that goes with it and then they'll get a carton of milk. So at the end of the line, the um, driver is going to tick off the kids that were here. And just for your information, they can't do it later on. They can't be sitting in their vehicle and say, oh, well I have I'm marked off five and I think I saw four. It needs to be at the end of the line where they get their meals. 
and the children also need to take three components of the meal in order for us to get reimbursed for that. So when you get their meal, there's five components to a meal. There's gonna be a meat or a meat alternative, a dairy, a fruit, a vegetable, and a grain. So they're gonna have those five components. A child needs to take at least three of those. So if they take the whole container of their meal that comes like the TV dinner, they automatically usually always get those three components right there. Some of the kids are gonna say, no, I don't want the milk. You're not gonna force them in order to make it three components. Um, but they need to take three of those in order for us to be in reimbursed for that. So then also on the sheet, after the children have been served, they can have a second meal, but they also, again, need to take a whole three components in order for us to mark that down. So, um, and then on this sheet, it says meals served to program adults. Program adults are you as volunteers. So if you um, take one of the meals, you need to mark that as a program volunteer. Now, if there's a parent there that's eating with their child and they get a meal, we don't serve that to them until all of the kids have been served. So once they have been served, then we can open it up to the parents if they want to have a meal. Um, we have been soliciting donations in order to be able to provide this. Kids that have their parents tend there with them tend to eat better. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we're really tracking all of that so that we can say, oh yeah, this year we had an increase in parents being involved and we had more kids come because the parents came, but we've got to find a way to be able to pay for that meal because the meals that we're getting reimbursed for through the Department of Agriculture are for children 18 and under. So we need to make sure that we're tracking all of that very well. So do we need to make the parents stand at the back of the line? Yeah, that's usually, or they usually set at the park, so just wait and just see when all of the kids go through and then, then they have them, is what I've seen before. So, There's going to be enough I'm, meals because that during, they're going to have all of the meals with them at the site. Um, we're hoping that we're going to get away from waste at the end. At the beginning, it's kind of a guessing game. What we're going to do for the first week is we're going to go based off numbers from last year. So that first week is kind of our trial period of how many do we need to send to Jones? How many do we need to send to Oak Hill to be able to look off of that? Um, and last year, we did pretty good within that first week to be able to have that guesstimate of how many needed to be sent. I think the main thing is reference for the parents to eat is that we just want to make sure that the kids have had that first meal. Um, if, if we end up, let's say it's the third stop for the driver and they end up short for a parent to eat, then we would just make sure the children are fed and, and that parent will have, tomorrow will add an extra set. I don't think so. Um, I think primarily it's if a child can't eat, that's a different thing. Um, but if it's a parent, then we probably wouldn't come back and get more and go back. So, Jenny, we got another question. Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt a little confused about the parent thing. Like, if your meal time is 12 to 12:30. Then should we wait till twelve thirty to serve those? To go ahead and serve it at the end of that twelve thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, completely. Yeah, because you might have some little kiddos that run up at twelve twenty-five and they're ready to eat. Right. Um, and it's really important as you're going to the sites and as you're consistent there, keep encouraging the kids to come and let them know. You know, make sure that you're here between this time because this is a lot different than last year for them because. Last year, they had that time period where they had longer time frames for them to be there. So those first couple of weeks is really important to let them know. Once that time period is over, they're going to go away with meals. So if you come at 12:25 and it ended at, or 12:35 and it ended at 12:30, there's not going to be any meals left here. And last year we had a lot of leftovers. So some of the sites would have sandwiches or whatever it was in the fridges there. Like the Lad Library had a fridge, Oak Hill had a fridge. And with those, we could use those, but we're not doing that this year because we're trying to take away from waste. And then also this year, if we have any meals left at the end of the time, people have been concerned, well, you're trying to save waste, but there's, there might be meals left over. 
The kitchen is going to, as long as it's within that two hour time period and it comes back here, they'll, temp they'll take the temperature of it and make sure that it meets the food safety guidelines. And if it does, those can be repackaged to be able to use depending on if it was a hot or cold meal, they can be used for the next day or it takes three days and they need to be thrown away. And then also if it's within that food temperature, if it's one of the hot days, they can take that package off and flash freeze it for our senior meals to be able to go out to our seniors. So the food won't be getting thrown in the garbage. A lot of people worry about that. Well, all those meals, what are you gonna do with them? Last year we took them to um, Waypoint, we took them to the homeless shelter. This year we're gonna be able to take them and put them right back in so that the food isn't wasted. But I have one more question. I think I know the answer to this. Okay. okay if your meal time is like 12 to 12 30, we shouldn't start at even one minute until 12, right? Nope. That's okay. what happened at the library. <laughs> oh, okay. they, yeah. Oh, and then okay. they stopped one minute after. So she, she marked those down. Okay. So make okay. sure your meal time is 12 o'clock to 12 30, start at 12 o'clock, end at 12 30, okay. and then they'll go. And it might be that you're sitting there every day and it's like, all of the kids are gone by 12.20, we gotta wait there yeah. until 12.30. You can't just pack them and say, oh, I'm not seeing anybody out here in the park. If a kid shows up at 12.29 and says, hey, it's at 12.30 and nobody was here, where's my meal? We can't take the risk of that. We don't want a little hungry kid out there. So. I think what happened more uh, than often last year was that we have all these kids lined up early and the food was there and it's like, it's hot. I wanna get started. I wanna get started, yeah. So hopefully this year with their meal times, mm -hmm. that's really going to take out on some of that where they're going to know you have that half hour, okay. be here for that to get started out there. So, um, The next thing we're going to talk about are your site monitors. I have the site monitors listed up here. So you all met Brian and I'm Jenny Barnett. Carl's not here right now, but Carl is responsible for McKinley, Daniels Park, Kirkwood Estates, Ellis Park, Jackman Park and Jones Park. Brian Sequenza, oh, Carl Cassell is extension 1010. Brian Sequenza is extension 1303. Thomas Park, Bali High Estates, Marion Public Library, Five Seasons Mobile Home. Um, Jenny Barnett, that is I. I will be, I am at extension 1011. I will be at Grandview, Land Lab Library, Oak Hill Jackson, Cedar Terrace Mobile Homes, and some of you Village. Site monitors have had some extra training, and so they know all the ins and outs of like how much, what, how much is something supposed to, a serving size. They know that um, who to contact if we had a heat advisory and we need to submit a form to the state because we were, we allow the children to take the meals off site, and we'll talk about that here towards the end of our training. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns at your site, please get a hold of your site monitors. You should be seeing them weekly. If you don't see their faces, they're gonna have somebody else that will be filling in and they'll be at the site. And it's just nice to be able to have those site monitors go and be able to help right off the bat. And then also if there's issues at the site, we'll be able to take care of those as the summer progresses and be able to handle those issues. So I had some little questions. Um, I didn't do it last year and the year before, and maybe it's completely changed, but we picked up sack lunches at the Methodist Church in Marion. Oh. No, we're not doing that anymore. That's, that's the fly uh, yeah. program. Yeah. That's different than the summer meals program. Oh, so I'm at the wrong meeting. Are you, are you just doing fly or are you involved with summer meals? Okay, then. Sorry. Would you like to help out with selling you? I work and I'm guilty and I've already committed all these people okay. to the fly program. To what, to what location though? Marion Library. No, you're doing the summer meals program. Oh. Yes. So you are in the right place. Yay. So we don't go to the Methodist Church anymore. No. Okay. Okay. So all right. you're in the right place. You can okay. stay with us for a little bit longer. <laughs> And then another one of the things, if you've done summer meals other places, some places have where they don't have the meals prepackaged like that and they'll serve up and they have to worry about serving sizes. We don't have to worry about any of that because we have a commercial kitchen here and they take care of all that. They're already measuring out how many ounces of everything and all that. So once you get that meal, you don't have to worry about serving sizes or what the components are. Give, make sure that you give every the, all of the stuff when the kids come. So they get the meal, they get the fish 
apple that's with it and there's milk, they can go ahead and take that. Um, other policies and issues, what to do um, if the weather is bad. If the National Weather Service declares it a heat index day, we're allowed to submit a form to the state um, that the children are able to grab their meal and they're able to take it off site. Normally the children have to eat their meal on site. They can't come up and say, oh, I'm here for summer meals, take their meal and then go home. Unless it's one of those days where it's a heat index or there's a storm or whatever we have, the driver's going to tell you on those days whether they can do that or not. One of the requirements is they have to eat on site. Um, for some people that doesn't make any sense, but it is one of their policies. So we got to make sure they keep their meals there, eat there, and then they can take off. Um, severe weather for the park sites, for those of you that are in the parks. Um, in the case of severe weather during a meal, um, it, the meals may need to be canceled in the park for the day. Um, and this has to do with safety issues. So um, at those parks, remember to continually tell the kids, if it's storming out or you get a tornado sirens, don't come down here to the park to come get your meal, because that is not safe. It's dangerous and we don't want them getting hurt. Um, if there's a light sprinkle in the parks, there's pavilions, so we're not so sweet that we're gonna melt. So we're still gonna feed our kiddos their <laughs> meals when it's just lightly sprinkling out. And you'll still have some kids that'll come out for that too, so. Um, tornadoes, if you're in the parks and you hear the tornado siren, um, the recommendation is that you go to the nearest bathroom or you go to the pool changing buildings um, and go in there um, in order to take shelter during the storm. Um, how to handle behavior issues and emergencies. Um, at times, some people have said they'd be concerned that if a child was being abused or neglected, um, we don't want you to deal with those situations. We want you to immediately contact your site monitor. They're going to be able to help you in those situations. You all are not mandatory reporters while you're volunteering during the summer meals. Um, so we want to make sure the site monitors take care of that. If you're ever concerned about the safety of a child or yourself, call 911. Someone's physical safety is going to get hurt, you need to call 911. Never put your hands on a child. It is, a, it is the policy to never have hands on a child. Even if they're having issues, call 911 so that the authorities can deal with that. Any questions about that? Okay, we're almost finished up here. Um, just a few additional comments to have. You guys are in a very good position to be able to encourage healthy eating for the kids. Some of these kids, this is the meal that they're going to get for the day. If they don't get their summer meal, they're not going to have lunch. So it's a great opportunity for you to be able to encourage them to eat foods um, and make sure that they're taking the components and you can talk about those things. Um, last year I was at one of my sites doing a site visit and there was a little girl, she was three, and her brother, he was going to be five because he was going into kindergarten. And that day, I can't remember what was all on the menu, but I do know that there were apples on the menu. And the little girl picked up that apple and she was kind of, what do you do with this? And she handed it to her mom and her mom was like, well, she, I was like, what is she doing? She was like, well, she's never had a whole apple. I was like, what do you mean she's never had a whole apple? And she said, I buy applesauce, strawberry applesauce, but she won't eat a real apple. And they said, well, help her eat it and maybe she will. So she hands it back and she said, eat, eat, eat. And the little girl is trying and trying. She doesn't have enough teeth to get into that apple. And I told the mom, bite into that so you can get it open and give it to her. You should have saw the little girl's eyes light up when she got contact with that apple. And then she was licking it like a lollipop and she was so excited. I'm so excited talking to her about apples are good for you and you know make sure you buy your apples and cut them up take the skin off for little kids and then while I'm talking to her the little boy is chowing down on his apple by the time I like look over at him he is eating the core he's over there chomping away and I was like hold up hold up hold up and he was like what and I was like you don't eat that part and he was like but it's so good so that one opportunity we might take for granted that we go to the grocery store and buy a five pound bag of apples some of these kids don't get that opportunity. So this is our chance to have learnable teaching moments to show them about healthy food and then also teach them about some things that we take for granted. Another thing that I want you all to remember is that everybody has food preferences and we need to think about that. I know I've had, I've worked in food service before where we served meals to low income children 
And I've had volunteers say, well, how can they be picky if they're hungry? If you're gonna give them food, why shouldn't they eat it? I won't eat cooked broccoli. You will, cannot pay me a million dollars to eat cooked broccoli. So there are gonna be some kids that may be picky. But we need to encourage them. It takes, I believe, 21 tries for somebody to get a food preference. So think about that. If they just try it one time and then they never try it again, they never get the opportunity to get some of those tastes that we don't know. And then also another thing as a volunteer, what's important is teaching those kids that it's okay to have different tastes. It's a domino effect when you're at the sites and you'll see that there's one kid that doesn't like the, let's see what was something else they didn't like, um, the ham salad. Kids don't like unidentifiable meat. <laughs> we didn't put it on the menu this year. But there was one site that I was at and there was this little girl and she loved it. She's just eating her sandwich away. Somebody else sits down and he's like, I'm not eating that, that's nasty. And then all of a sudden, all ham salad sandwiches were dropped down and the little girl was like looking down at her plate and I said, hey, that's not nice to say that. I'm sure there's stuff that you don't like that nobody else likes. And we kind of talked about it and I was like, will you try it for me? He's like, I'm not trying that. And another kid was like, I'll try it. Have you ever seen Fear Factor? And then all of a sudden it was like a little game and I got all these kids to eat the nasty ham salad. <laughs> So just doing that with the kids, because you'll see that domino effect. If one kid, especially the kids that are more outgoing, those kids can cause a bad thing to happen amongst all of them. But you can also use those kids to be champions at those sites. There was one kid that came and he always complained about stuff and he was older. I pulled him aside one day and I was like, can you just act like you're eating your sandwich so all these kids will do it? He's like, well, why? I was like, watch, if you start eating, they're all gonna eat. So it was like our little game that we played. And then when I would go, he's like, I got that kid to eat, whatever it was. So that's what's important about you guys. It's not about just going there and handing them a meal. It's about the teachable moments to be able to teach them about healthy food and how to be better people too. Not making fun of people and how we can have differences and those kind of things, so. Um, menus, the drivers will all have menus. Just so you know, just like we used to do, we, we have it with the seniors, they pick choices. The kids wanna know what's coming up on the menu. Some kids will specifically show up for chicken patty day. I'll tell you, that is a favorite of all the kids. We'll have lots of kids on those days. And the kitchen even knows that. On the days that we're gonna have chicken patties, we're gonna need to make more meals. Last year when we didn't take the chicken salad or ham salad type things off the menus, we knew kids weren't going to eat as much on there. So let the kids know, hey, tomorrow's chicken patty day and you're probably gonna see more kids. So this will be in the binders with the drivers. If you can, just remember, hey, you guys, tomorrow this is what it is. Or you can talk to them about different foods and say, is there anything on there that you've never tried? Do you think on Thursday you could try those carrots with the ranch in them or whatever it is? So their menus will be there for them. And we also changed our menus last year and we also changed them from this year as well to go by what the kids really liked before we used to serve the same meals as the seniors had that doesn't work with kids <laughs> the seniors meals are pretty bland we need stuff that's kid friendly so we changed that and we saw that the kids ate better when they were having those choices that were kid friendly um the last thing we will be having a summer meals kickoff event this is going to be june 13th from 11 to 12 at the Ladd Library. Um, it's not going to be an event like we had last year in the park. This is just a way that we are trying to um, get kids to invite their friends to the summer meals program so that we can offer more meals. Um, Larry the Lunchbox, has anybody ever seen Larry the Lunchbox? Should have had a visit today. He might be out on appearances though. But Larry the Lunchbox is going to be at the library and he's going to be passing out flyers that have the times and the locations of the site. Um, and then there'll also be a coupon on there. And the coupon is going to be so kids can go have a free summer meal at one of the sites. And we'll also be encouraging healthy eating by giving out packages of carrots. The kids at the Sapodapa Parade liked it. <laughs> there were only a couple that like, I don't want that, and, like they closed their bags. But the parents were really excited that at the parade we were giving out carrots. So that's gonna be coming up. Any questions? But the program starts June 8th, right? June 8th, yep. The kickoff is until the 13th. The 13th, yep. I do have one question, too, about the, um, you're giving me there for a half an hour, and you're hoping that 
children will be done eating in that period of time. No, they don't have to be done in the half hour. We're only going to be serving for a half hour. They could, we're going to have the volunteers there for an hour. So they might be there. If it starts at noon, the kids might be there till 1 o'clock eating, and then the volunteer leaves. So at the end of that time period, if they're just kind of messing around and they're being not, I mean, how much of a responsibility is it for you to stay there until they disperse or what? There, there really isn't. Uh, the summer meals is during that hour. Um, we have to be very mindful. Everybody needs to get back to work, right. things like that. And so quite often, I think what's going to happen is the exact opposite. They're going to get there. They're going to get their food. They're going to be done. Um, and there's going to be 20 minutes left, and you aren't going to have any kids around. Um, because typically, they're not going to stay around very long. However, at some of the sites, we are going to have some activities going on. And it will be during that second half hour. And so the, the, we want to get engage them in some other activities if we can. And so a few of those sites will have that going on. Uh, which brings me to an ask of you. We are short drivers. Volunteer drivers to take the meals to the sites. I was just informed that if we don't find the drivers, we're not going to be able to have the book wagon this year. Last year the book wagon was extremely popular. We had probably 2,000 books that were handed out, but there was a driver for the book wagon. Priority is drivers for the lunches, and then driver for the book wagon. So, if you know of someone that can drive a vehicle and has about two hours of time. They have to be 18. Yeah. Um, then please let us know about it. We really, I really do not want to cancel out the book wagon if at all possible. Any kind of vehicle, does that have to be a van? How much space do you need? Do you know what they're driving? I, I don't know exactly what they're driving, um, but I think they are vehicles that are here. Oh, okay. And so it would basically just be the driver, not the driver, and the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, Mary? I think they have to check the follow through on that, because I'm not quite sure. Yeah, we need, to, we need to double check on it. One of the things I might share that Rising is going to do, the management team, going to take the responsibility to drive to one site and so that maybe I volunteer for Monday, Terry volunteers for, for Tuesday. So if you've got back in your offices an opportunity to challenge your managers, maybe that's something that would encourage them. We also could use some more volunteers at the sites. Um, we're running short of volunteers this year. Um, it is a longer season this year because we didn't have the snow days that we had last year. So we're starting two weeks earlier than what we did last year. And hopefully, uh, because of the legislation that was passed, hopefully our new Cedar Rapids uh, district uh, head of the school is going to ask that the kids can go back on the third, uh, 23rd of August. And so that's why we would end on the 21st. I think it's the 21st. Yeah, Terry. If the driver at my location doesn't show up, do I call my site monitor or call the office? The, we got the, the summer meals, there was a different number. I just didn't know who, who do I call, site monitor? Call or your site monitor, yes. They'll take care of anything summer meals. Um, yes. oh, where's the where's the kickoff? At Lab Library. At Lab Library on June 13th. June 13th from 11 to 12. Okay. Any other questions? Again, many, many, many thanks. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good day.